Hey y'all, it's Chelsea and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my June wrap up. Please disregard the kittens. They have the zoomies this morning. They're going to be in and out of the shot this whole time. I haven't done a sit down video in what feels like forever. Like I've just been vlogging. This feels foreign to me. We are in pajamas though because um, I'm not going to be taking up much of your time. I read four books in June. Four. I quit audiobooks and it shows. I'm doing this solely off of just like straight memory. I don't have many notes to refer back to, so please excuse. I started off the month with Manacled. This took me 21 days to read and my Goodreads review got fucking deleted somehow. I don't know. So I literally don't have anything to refer back to anymore. I gave it three stars. It was the most complicated three star rating I think I've ever given. It was just, even now, I, I still don't know if I liked it or not. Like, I know that this was originally published as a fan fiction, so you're getting it in, like, probably what I'm assuming are weekly installments. And if you're reading it that way as it's being released, I think it works really well. But trying to read it as an entire novel, it is incredibly long-winded and boring. So I spent the whole, like, first section of the story just wanting to get to the flashbacks because I was getting so annoyed with not having all of the information and not knowing why certain things were the way that they were and this, that, and the other. Hello, Naran. Hello, Naran. God, he's so cute. Look at this face. And then when I finally got to the flashbacks, we got like 68 flashbacks. I was in those flashbacks so long that I was forgetting what was going on with the main plot. So when I got back to that point, I was like really fucking confused and had to think real hard about what was happening. It was... It was a time. I will say I couldn't stop fucking picking this book up. I constantly wanted to be flipping those pages. And I will say the magic is fucking dark. That shit followed me into my dreams. I had some very weird dreams during the reading of this book. So I, I don't know if I'd recommend this to people or not. Probably because I seem to be the outlier here. People are giving this like five stars left and right. I don't regret having read it. Um, but I just, I don't know how I feel about it as a whole. I know that this got picked up to be traditionally published and I will be checking that out because essentially this author is going to have to change everything because of copyright issues. And I'm really curious to see what that might look like. And obviously something in like a, a novel format and not a fan y format. So I am eager for that if that gives you any kind of insight into how I felt about this fanfic. I also read Perfume and Pain by Anna Dorn. This was another three star. I read this in almost one sitting. It, it's an unhinged lesbian. Once I realized it was unhinged, you know me, I was very weary going in because typically the unhinged writing style drives me up a wall. I can feel my brain cells dying. Like it just, it doesn't do it for me. This one worked. This one worked. I will say the thing that has stuck with me the most is that our narrator describes herself as looking like Helga Pataki from Hey Arnold. And I, I will take that to my grave. I love that. While I don't want to own a physical copy of this, um, I don't think I'd ever reread it. I do have the rest of Anna Dorn's catalog sitting in my Amazon wish list because I want to see what else she can do. So while this wasn't my favorite, I do highly recommend and I, I really want to get my hands on her other stuff. I also read Air this month by Saba Tahir. I got this as an arc and I have i don't think I've ever been more excited to get an arc before. I am chomping at the bit to get my hands on this book as soon as it was announced. I think back in March and I've been obsessing over it ever since. I can't believe I got approved. It was a great day. I vlogged it. You can see the initial reaction. It's fantastic. I gave this four stars. This fits in with the whole Ember in the Ashes rating system. I gave every book in that series four stars, except for Reaper at the Gates. Reaper at the Gates is my favorite. I gave that one five stars. So if you didn't know, 
air takes place in the same world as the ember and the ashes but we're we're starting 20 years after that series has ended i feel like you need to read the ember and the ashes series before you go into this book because you're instantly going to be spoiled for that entire series and also you'll get a lot more context for other things that are kind of mentioned on a whim that I think Saba is just assuming that you're you're going to have all the details for. So I feel like that will be really helpful, though you can technically read it on, on its own. I loved our new cast of characters. I had a lot of fun with that. I loved also seeing the original trio, even Helene, even though it's been 20 years and that woman is still an idiot, but no one outright told her she was an idiot this time. So that was different. Um, Saba Tahir is just such a great author. I, I love... I love everything that she writes. She really perfected how to end a chapter in this book. Like at the end of every chapter, I literally said, oh shit, and then instantly needed to turn the page because I needed to know what was happening. When I read the last page, I didn't know it was the last page and I literally said, oh fuck. Yeah, he's, he's gotten his debut. So I really, really enjoyed it. Again, I don't know if I want to buy a copy of it Beebs, you're killing me, Beebs. Look at that face. <laughs> I don't know if I want to buy a copy of it, but I do have my eyes on the Walmart edition because it's purple. So ask me again in October and I'll let you know. Shit, what was the last book I read? Okay, so I did listen to one audiobook this month. It was my last audiobook. I had already gone through my Libby app and I actually deleted all of the audiobooks I had on there and exchanged them out for ebooks if they were available because that's how done I am with audiobooks. This last one was the only one left because my libraries didn't have an ebook in English. They had them in like German, which I thought was really strange. And I really wanted to read this book. So I listened to it on audio and it was my only five star read for the month. I still don't want to read any more audiobooks though, but it was a phenomenal audiobook. So I read Between Two Kingdoms. I found this because I was looking for other books that were like Nomadland. And when I saw the cover of this one, I was like, woman sitting on top of a bus with her little dog, I'm in. Um, that's not what the story is like at all as a whole. You are following this woman. It's a memoir, by the way. You're following this woman as she gets diagnosed with leukemia. And you are following the in-depth journey of what that process is like before, during, and after. And I sobbed my fucking eyes out to the point where I, if I had to throw something away because I listened to this at work and like the trash can is behind like my working area, I was throwing things over my shoulder because I didn't want to actually turn around to throw things in the trash because I didn't want anyone else in the warehouse mm -hmm. to just see tears streaming down my face. It was a very intense read, but it was so fucking beautiful. It is in my wish list. I want a copy of it so badly. And I really want this woman to write more books because I'll pick up anything that she writes. She's, she's a really talented writer in my opinion. And it was just, it was such a heartbreaking, but heartwarming story. She, she goes on this road trip across the States visiting all these people who wrote to her while she was going through her chemotherapy and she goes and um, she, she learns about their stories. Like she drives all the way down to Texas to visit a man on death row because he was writing to her and that was very heartbreaking and just all of it, just thinking about it makes me want to cry. Beebs is laughing at me, but it was so fucking good. I, read it too, I, I want it. It's, it's in my wish list. I want it. It, it was just, it was so good. Like I literally have tears falling out of the eyes thinking about it. It was so good. So if you like memoirs, give it a try. Just give it a try. I really think it's, it's worth the read. So good. And that, that was it. That was all I read in June. It was a very <laughs> slumpy month, but we got through it. July isn't seeming to be that much better, but I am reading more actively during the month of July. Thank you for watching this video. If you made it all the way through, leave me, what emoji should they leave me, Biebs? Leave me the skull emoji. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, please give a like if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon in anyone. Bye.